Welcome everyone, this is Chris Cohn with Efficiency First California. I'll be your moderator today for uh, the webinar, which is entitled Help Design the New Build It Green Advanced Home Upgrade Portal. Uh, today I would like to uh, welcome uh, our attendees on the phone, which will include uh, contractors from the Energy Upgrade California Home Upgrade Program. Uh, it is your work around the uh, PG&E territory in Northern California that is ensuring that homeowners have access to affordable and effective uh, efficiency upgrade services. Also part of our audience today uh, are uh, participating contractors in PG&E's AC Quality Care Rebate Program, again providing good support for homeowners uh, having to do with uh, air conditioning and heating services in the uh, territory as well. Uh, before we get started, we have a couple of event announcements. Uh, on Next week on April uh, 8th and 9th in Fresno, California, uh, Build It Green is hosting a two-day sales training boot camp with Mike Rogers of Oaten Stout uh, Consulting. Uh, many of you know Mike. He's uh, excellent presenter and very knowledgeable in both the in-field construction process as well as the suite of business systems and structures that, uh, that companies need to have in place in order to grow and, uh, and, and scale up their business in their market. So uh, be sure to uh, contact your Build a Green uh, agent or uh, go to the website to register for the two-day boot camp in Fresno next week. And we will repeat this information at the end of today's webinar in case you uh, uh, want a reminder. The other big event coming up is the National ACI Home Performance Conference in Detroit at the end of this month. This is the big national event. Uh, Van Jones, uh, who's uh, quite well known in the uh, green collar economy uh, arena is going to be the keynote speaker. This is where uh, there will be plenty of opportunities to network and to find out the latest thinking in all uh, different aspects of uh, industry growth. So be sure to check that out. I believe I saw this morning that they've extended the early registration discount. Uh, so to getting started for today, uh, we will have a presentation uh, section of the webinar and, and I will uh, review our presenters in just a moment. Following that uh, presentation will be a generous uh, Q&A session. Today is really about getting your feedback and ideas and answering your questions about the approach that's being developed uh, for a revised and upgraded uh, web portal for the Advanced Home Upgrade Program. So uh, we definitely do want to hear from you and get your thoughts on everything that you see today and um, any suggestions that you may have. So uh, under this format, if you uh, do have a, a question or a comment during the presentation, uh, please Go ahead and use the question pane. You see that on your uh, left there, the little illustration. You can enter a question there. Also, during the Q&A, the raised hand button on the far left is the way to let us know that you would like to be unmuted to make a comment or uh, dialogue with one of our presenters. So uh, bl please be sure to use the raised hand button, and that will let us know that you would like to make a comment. Also. Uh, in order for us to be able to unmute you, uh, you do need to uh, enter your audio PIN. That would be a two to three digit number that is uh, displayed to you in the audio pane on your control panel. So if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and enter your audio PIN and that will allow us to, um, to bring you uh, completely into the conversation when we get to the Q&A session. And let's see here. Uh, yes, so just a reminder, the question pane is there or the raised hand feature during Q&A. We are recording the webinar. At any time, you can collapse your uh, control panel there if you want to see the screen more fully. And we um, welcome your questions and comments today. 
So now to the presentation. We have three presenters, uh, all of whom I'm sure you're familiar with. Our first will be Leif Magnuson with PG&E, and he will provide a high-level overview of uh, the web portal uh, process and how it fits into some state initiatives regarding uh, allowing a more energy modeling software products uh, into the California market, which is a significant uh, development that will be coming online fairly soon. Then we'll hear from Bruce Mast, Director of Business Development with Build It Green. And he will outline for us today the uh, process of a web portal improvements that Build It Green has been undertaking of which the Advanced uh, Home Upgrade Portal is uh, the last in a series of three phases of this project. So we'll get all the details from Bruce. And then uh, Joe Giarusso, who is um, managing the Home Upgrade Program for Build It Green, will uh, walk us through a live demo of the um, AC Quality Care and the Home Upgrade Web Portals, which have already undergone uh, an upgrade process and uh, include features that are under consideration for the advanced home upgrade portal. So you'll get to see these features in action and when uh, Joe has finished his demonstration we'll go right to the Q&A uh, part of our meeting and have a uh, what we hope is a fruitful and uh, good discussion with you to get your ideas and input on uh, these ideas so that uh, moving forward, the updates to the advanced portal can be informed by, by your experience and your suggestions. So now I would like to turn the meeting over to uh, Leif and uh, take it away, Leif. Thank you very much, Chris. That was a really great, uh, organ or well-organized uh, presentation getting us started here today. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, I, I want to thank everybody who is on the phone call today. Um, you're setting aside a bit of your time to help us improve this portal. Um, very, very much appreciated. So I'm just going to take a minute to provide a little bit of context. Um, this is one of our many efforts um, to continuously improve the program, to streamline it, make it uh, work better for contractors, more effective. Um, and hopefully more efficient. The part of the context that this portal sits in is it's going to occur as an upgrade to the advanced program at about the same time that we're going to bring new software into the program. So this is um, the effort that we have talked about on the NorCal forums a couple of times. and. For those of you who may not be aware of it, um, I encourage you to attend the NorCal forums to, to find out more of the details about it. But we're going to bring <coughs> new software uh, to the advanced program. Um, we, our estimated time is late May, early June time frame for um, having that software available. What we anticipate we'll do before it goes live in the program is provide training ask each of the software vendors to provide uh, two to four hour training sessions on their new software. Um, we'll give you pretty, plenty of advance notice on that <clears throat> so you can get that on your calendar. And then really it's up to you to select which of those software models you want to use in the program going forward. We're hoping those models will be easier to use. We're hoping that they'll uh, make a better prediction of energy savings. And uh, all in all, um, perhaps provide you a, a, a greater suite of tools to choose from that help facilitate the contractor-customer interaction. Um, as part of, of these the general upgrades, uh, we will be building out a new back-end data system to take in what are called HPXML files, which is the new data language that has been agreed upon nationally um, for all uh, modeling software output. And uh, so Build It Green has been working diligently to um, to build out their data systems to be able to read those files um, accurately and, uh, and store all that data. 
that you will be so diligently inputting um, to those to those software models. So at the same time, they are proposing an upgrade to the portal to um, also help facilitate the, um, it, the re, re, they're receiving those input files and then um, facilitate the back and forth that happens when they do desktop uh, QA review and um, and uh, need to communicate with you about the status of those um, those those submittals. So um, I will let Bruce take it from here to uh, describe that in a little bit more detail. But um, once again, I want to just thank everyone for uh, being on the phone to to provide us input to this. It's really valuable. I hope uh, you appreciate it to the fact that uh, that we're open and willing to, to get input, but even more important to take that input and um, and and act on it to improve the tools that we have um, in the program. So once again, thank you everyone for attending. Bruce? Great. Thank you very much, Leif. Uh, this is Bruce Mast. I'm uh, the director of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm now the deputy executive director of Build a Green. Uh, what I'd like to do this morning is uh, spend some time providing a little bit more context, uh, go into a little bit more depth about why we're developing a portal, why now, how this ties into uh, the effort to open up our program to multiple software tools, uh, and then talk in some detail about the process and how you as contractors uh, can contribute to that process and talk about the timeline. And frankly, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the, the risks and uncertainties in the, in the development process, because there are some. So I want to use this opportunity to try and uh, set some expectations uh, within the group. So as Leif indicated, the, the, the trigger for this has been the need to open up our program to multiple software tools. Um, and we're uh, kind of following on the heels of similar efforts in Arizona, Arizona Public Service, and New York, and Virginia, and Washington, and a few other programs around the country that have developed uh, programs where they can accept uh, model results from multiple software tools. And so, so we're, we're building on that, and that's, that's really great. Uh, the, the need to be able to accept multiple software output files triggers a need on our end as implementers to build in new capabilities into our, into our tracking system. Um, as Leif said, we've got to be able to read a file, parse that data into a, a into data tables, into into uh, our databases, and calculate rebates, and review job applications, and approve them, and transmit approved jobs to PG&E for incentive payment. Um, and uh, the files that we're going to be getting from these, these new softwares are substantially different from the files that we get today from Energy Pro. Uh, so we've got to build some new systems, and that's that's just that's an integral part of implementing this multi-software HPXML strategy that we've been designing. So that's that's an integral piece of this. So at Build a Green, we had a, you know a choice: we could uh, modify our existing tracking system to build in these new capabilities and keep the same user interface that you're all familiar with, um, or we could build a new version with a new user interface, new portal. Um, we elected for that second option. Um, we did so because uh, we think that in the process we can actually solve a couple other issues that we've had over time, um, both in streamlining some of our administrative steps as well as hopefully offering you a friendlier user interface that's easier for you to navigate and hopefully makes your life a little bit easier. Um, so we think that this is an opportunity that, that presents itself, to, you know, the need to, to make these changes. And so we see this as an opportunity to, uh, to build a new portal that will uh, prove to be a, a distinct improvement over what we have today. Um, and we feel pretty confident about that because we've already done this a couple times. Um, you know, the, the processes and the functions that we need for the advanced path are very similar to what we need for the basic path, the home upgrade path, pretty similar to what we need for the AC Quality Care program. And for the home upgrade path and for AC Quality Care, we've already built portals to, to accept jobs and we've already beta tested them with contra contractors and 
We know they work, and so we have solutions that we can leverage, and we just need to transfer them to the advanced uh, scenario. So we feel pretty confident in our ability to do that, and we don't, you know, we're not too concerned about uh, unknowns in the design on that side. There are some other issues I want to talk about a little bit. Um, one is um, I want to spend a little time talking about uh, Energy Pro. So we've got these new software tools coming in, and you're going to have you know a whole list to choose from. Hopefully, at the end of the day, um, but we also want to make sure you have the choice of staying with what you got now, right? If you want to keep using Energy Pro, keep using Energy Pro. Um, so you know you always have the option of maintaining the status quo. Uh, the thing that's a bit of a complication is that Energy Pro doesn't use the HPXML standard. Um, and to my knowledge, there's no plans to upgrade Energy Pro to the HPXML standard anytime soon. Um, so to to accommodate that, you know, we need to maintain some some backwards compatibility. And uh, so the way to do that is, you know, this existing portal that currently accepts Energy Pro models, you know, we're going to continue to maintain that for the foreseeable future. Um, so it does present, you know, a bit of a complication if, you know, it comes time to submit a job application. If you're using new software with the HPXML uh, outputs, then you'd use the new portal. If you're using Energy Pro with the old outputs, you'd use the old portal. Um, over the longer term, we'd like to bring these together into, you know, in, into one platform so that it's easy, simple, convenient streamlined, um, but that's uh, that's a longer development process. So uh, up front, there's going to be this these parallel systems. Um, but what that does mean for you as a contractor is that um, you get to decide when to switch on your own timeline. Right? You get to fully evaluate the software tools that are available to you, pick the one that you like best. You get to evaluate uh, the new portal to your satisfaction, make sure it works to your satisfaction, understand how it works. and play with it using dummy data, et cetera. And when you feel comfortable that everything works the way it needs to work and you understand how it works, then you can make the switch over in your business process. Uh, so you know, we're not telling you you have to make some kind of switch by date certain. So uh, we, we have that flexibility um, built into the process. Um, I'm going to talk, let me, I'm just kind of looking at a couple of questions here I want to make sure that I address. Um, let's talk a little bit about the the plan, the, the contractor involvement in all this. Um, it is important that you as contractors have a chance to, you know, review the process, you know, while it's in development and provide comments and feedback uh, as we go forward. So I want to talk about that next, um, and then uh, I've got a couple other uh, questions I was given here in advance I want to make sure get addressed. So let's. Let's talk about uh, our plan for getting uh, for testing this with with contracts. So, so let's go to the next slide. Or do, do I have controls of the slide here? No. Okay. Here's here's kind of an overview of our test plan, and uh, I guess to put this in some context. So Leif indicated that you know he thought these software tools would be you know available by late May, early June. Um, of course, you know the the key is. Uh, when can the entire system be ready, right, with, you know, the software tools and the tracking system to, uh, to accommodate that. Um, we're aiming to have everything up and running uh, by late June. Um, and let me just tell you right now that I believe that's a pretty aggressive timeline for reasons I want to talk to you uh, in a moment. Uh, but uh, we're, we're committed to, uh, you know, Hitting that uh, that timeline that that PG needs put forward. So uh, we've got uh, you know three different uh, distinct opportunities for uh, getting some contractor feedback here. So the first one is around uh, testing the user interface, uh, and uh, this is going to happen uh, pretty soon here, uh, starting in April. Uh, and uh, here we're looking for a small group of power users, people that. Um, uh, are you know, very adept at modeling, have submitted a bunch of jobs, uh, you know, very active in the program, uh, and and who could you know take our user interface and really put us through its paces and really poke at it, and you know have have that basic experience to give us some really strong feedback about how to make the interface as 
streamlined and intuitive as possible from uh, from the contractor's perspective. Um, so that's in developing the initial interface. Uh, then we've got a second phase here where we're actually testing a beta version of the portal. So at this point, it's not live yet, but at this point, we should have the capabilities built into it to read software from these other tools, and all that should have been, you know, fully uh, tested, um, and and all the bugs worked out of that. And so we have what we believe is, you know, kind of a draft final version. And there we're looking for a larger group of, you know, ten contractors who can really, uh, again, test it, uh, and and test the whole thing end to end, and make sure that we can do everything that we need to do. Um, and, and we're using you know, dummy jobs here, uh, so you're not, we're not asking you to, uh, you know, to beta test this thing with, with live data during you know, an actual business process. Uh, so we're looking at a larger group. And then once this thing is launched, uh, we're, we intend to be uh, collecting feedback from you on an ongoing basis through you know, surveys just to understand from the full audience you know, what's working, what's not working, and what, what we can make better. Um, I can tell you now that what we launch with initially will uh, probably be fairly bare bones. It's going to have all the critical functions in it that we need to process a job all the way through to rebate payment. But uh, it's quite possible there will be bells and whistles and enhancements that we will want to make that uh, that may not be there on day one, uh, but we'll have you know schedule for adding those uh, those enhancements over time. Um, so so that's kind of the, the three key phases. Let's talk a little bit more uh, about the timeline for that. Uh, so let's let's go to the next slide, please. So that first uh, piece, the user interface testing. So we're developing uh, kind of a working prototype of the user interface uh, right now. Uh, we're about ready to start recruiting some contractors to, to help us test that user interface. And uh, we should be ready to uh, actually conduct those tests uh, with a group of our power users here by about the third week of April. Um, and then you know, that feedback by about the first week of, of May, and you know, that feedback will, will then inform the, the remaining changes and enhancements we need to make uh, to that user interface as, as we go forward. Uh, so that's kind of the general timeline there. Uh, then the second phase, we're doing beta testing. Let's, let's go to that slide. So uh, here I haven't shown. Uh, specific dates, we're showing uh, kind of weeks relative to the point where we've got working systems with the software vendors. And uh, this gets at the heart of, I guess, where we see uncertainty in the schedule. Um, you know, the timeline that pg and &E presented to us, you know, gives us about three weeks to uh, test our interconnections with the software vendors. and. Uh, we're going to do everything in our power to, you know, hit that uh, that three-week uh, milestone. I believe that's a pretty aggressive schedule for a couple reasons. One is, you know, we've talked to the implementers uh, or the program administrators in Arizona, and in their experience, this was a non-trivial exercise, and I believe they spent several months doing it. Um, we've got a couple things going for us here. One is that. A few of our software vendors have previously gone through this exercise in Arizona, so they've already climbed this learning curve once. Well, that's good. Some of the other software vendors have not. They're doing this for the first time. Um, another concern for me is that um, our requirements for the output data set are a little bit different than Arizona's. Um, we've taken great pains to align them as closely as possible, and in particular, we've taken pains not to introduce what, what I would call breaking changes. Uh, what that means is that if a software vendor has a tool that works in Arizona, we're asking them to, to make some modifications to work in California, but in a way that it still works in Arizona. So we're not asking them to make any changes that, uh, you know, that breaks their ability to participate in Arizona. So we're building on the Arizona solution. Our programs are a little different, and so we have a little bit different information needs. And in partic particular, We've had to add some uh, additional output data requirements, uh, and they're concentrated in the areas of uh, predicted energy consumption, predicted energy savings, uh, and uh, model calibration utility bills. Um, and then we've also added another measure, pool pumps, that's not that Arizona doesn't recognize. So we've got some new data elements that we're asking for that Arizona uh, has not 
requested. So these are new elements that the software vendors have to uh, develop and be able to output. And, and these elements have not been tested in any real programs. So they're, they're defined in the HPXML schema, this national standard, but they've never actually been tested on the ground. And we've already encountered a situation where we may need to go back to the National Home Performance Council and ask them to actually edit the standards so that it will, you know, that the scheme that we're working with will actually work the way that it was intended. So um, there's potential for complications there, and, and like I said, we're going to try and get that done in the three-week period. Um, but, but that's where I see the biggest risk and uncertainty around this is that integration with these different software vendors. So what you see here is a, a timeline that is relative to kind of the, the completion of that integration process here. So then we have you know, a, a beta version that is fully functional, um, and we're able to accept uh, software, the output files from these different tools. Uh, by week three of that uh, milestone, we've got our, our contractors recruited who are going to do this beta testing for us. We've got sample jobs or sample output files from the different software vendors for them to test, and we're going through over a period of about 10 weeks. Um, and, and testing that out. Um, so that's that's what we what we're looking at there. Um, next slide. I think that may be my last slide. That, that is your last slide, Bruce. Yeah. So the I want to circle back. I was uh, provided a couple of uh, questions in advance to make sure that I touched on. I think I've addressed most of them. Um, one, I just want to reiterate. Uh, you know, we, we were asking, what is Builder Green's plan to ensure that when this portal goes live, that there will be minimal impact on the participating contractors? And I just want to stress, you know, a couple things. One is that we're building in this testing process, and we're inviting you to help test it with uh, dummy jobs. And then we're giving you the flexibility to decide when you want to make the transition, and you can do that on your own time, based on kind of your own evaluation of the system. So that's. That's our strategy for minimizing uh, the adverse impacts to you. And then there's one other question I think uh, is worth elaborating on this. And the question, I'm going to read it in its entirety here. So uh, contractors are anxious to be allowed to select new software tools per the Public Utility Commission ruling and pg e software project. Will this new system delay that implementation? And if so, what can Build a Green do to ensure that you comply with the ruling and not delay contractors? Um, so that's. Um, it's a difficult question to answer because, you know, to, to answer it definitively, we have to compare, you know, the timeline for, of setting up a new portal versus the timeline if we had gone and you know, modified the existing portal. And of course, since we're not modifying the existing portal, I don't actually know exactly what time that would have been. So I don't really know what my baseline is I'm comparing to. So uh, in terms of saying, will this be a delay or will it be faster? It's 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 hard to say that definitively. I think the thing I want to stress here is that. There is uncertainty in the schedule, and you know I anticipate that you know, you know we're aiming to have this thing up and running by the end of June. It may be longer than that, but the things that concern me about it are integral to the software project itself and the HPXML, and are not driven by uh, the portal development. We feel like the portal development exercise is uh, well known uh, because we're starting from these uh, these working solutions. Um, so I just want to, you know, just stress where that uncertainty is, and 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 uh, and and where things, in in my view, have the potential to slip. And I guess I also want to stress, you know, with this integration issue, that you know, part of the complexity is that we don't control the entire thing. So you know, we have to work with the software vendors, and they have to do their part and uh, make their system work per the specs. Um, if we have to get changes to HPXML, we have to go back and you know, inter work with the National Home Performance Council and National Renewable Energy Lab. We also need to be coordinating closely with our fellow implementers in Southern California uh, because they're doing the same thing, and we all need to be doing exactly the same thing. So uh, there's uh, lots of coordination that needs to happen, and uh, so we will do the things that are within our control um, to, to make this as expeditious as possible. Um, so I guess. My prepared remarks are done. I don't know, uh, Chris, did you want to take questions at this point, or did you want to go right into the demo? I think it would be best for us to hand it over to Joe for the demo, and then when we okay. uh, have time at the end for questions and comments, we'll ha everyone will have the whole picture to respond right. to. Very good. Uh, so thank you very much, Bruce. And uh, at this point, I'm going to switch the 
uh, uh, presenter to Joe. So Joe, it's coming over to you for the live demo. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, that should be uh, coming up on people's screens. Chris, are you uh, able to see that? I just I'll use you as my check. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So, okay, good morning, everyone. So, <clears throat> as mentioned, uh, my name is Joe Giarusso. I manage the uh, contract, the PG&E contracts here at Build It Green, um, home upgrade and uh, AC. Uh, quality care. And as mentioned, we've over the past few months have been working to uh, build this portal um, that really comes out of contractor feedback, uh, both from ACQC as well as Home Upgrade, in terms of needing an, a kind of a one-stop place. A lot of the a lot of uh, contractors um, participate in both of these programs, and it was as they signed up for both, it became obvious that for them it was easier if they had one point of access versus having to go one place for ACQC, another place for uh, home upgrade. And then on top of that, um, streamline and simplify the process for um, adding or uploading an application, associated files, as well as even tracking um, existing applications in the system. So th what you're seeing on the screen is literally kind of the, the, the single point of entry uh, for um, for contractors into the uh, into the programs here, <clears throat> what's going to pull up first here will be the AC Quality Care uh, program, and I'll just quickly kind of run through this. And I will one caveat is this is dummy data, so this is not uh, um, related to any particular jobs or contractor. And um, numbers are just kind of uh, put in there as random, so they're not necessarily lining up. But basically, what we've done on this on the dashboard concept here is that a contractor comes in the first time they log in, and they get to uh, the page. In this case, I had it default to AC Quality Care, and they get an immediate snapshot of where they sit, where their applications sit under the program. So you know what program you're in based on the title bar up here. And then you can see your status as a contractor of applications um, in the program. So very first, you have kind of this title bar that tells you how many of your applications so far have been submitted to PG&E uh, for processing. Um, and now there's a, the caveat or the thing to understand is there is submitting to us for review, approval, um, potential uh, field QC and then they get uploaded into PG&E system uh, for their own potential selection for their field QC and then uh, rebate payment. So what this indicates to the contractor is that 13 uh, applications have been submitted by us, by Build It Green, to PG&E. And then this will tell the contractors total rebates that have been paid against jobs um, that have been submitted. Um, next down below is gives uh, the contractor the application status. So they can see, based on the numbers, based on the donut graph here, the jobs that are at various statuses. So created, submitted, meaning then submitted to, P to submitted to Build It Green. Uh, applications under review, meaning that they are currently in review um, in our office. Then we have action required. So if there is an uh, application that needs additional follow-up by the contractor, it, when it moves to application or action required, that will notify the contractor that they have an app in there. Uh, resubmitted indicates that the contractor has fixed the action that was required and resubmitted that application for uh, continued review. Approval means it's been approved at our end, um, and then uh, submitted to pg &E, and then rebate issued indicates that according to our records from PG&E, PG&E has cut a check against that, um, against that particular job. Down below just also gives additional kind of um, snapshots to contractors, uh, letting them know kind of how they're performing in the program. So uh, how, much, how many rebate dollars were paid monthly over a six-month period, um, number of units, in the case for ACQC, a number of HVAC units um, submitted into the program, 
each month and then total rebate dollars by particular measures is uh, relevant for ACQC. Then down below, and this is kind of, this will be across all the uh, portal um, points. We've kind of, what we've done is we put in one place kind of a quick reference area. So as you know, we already send out a newsletter. We will send out updates as they come out. But I know that for, we know from hearing from contractors that a, some of the frustration is they don't get a chance to read the newsletter. It's just they've got too much coming in. They want to know what kind of trainings are coming up. And then a key one is also because the field QC process at our end, contractors would like to know what field inspections are coming up so they can use that um, as an opportunity to potentially even join the field inspector as a kind of a learning experience, uh, understand how that inspection is done, and so forth. So that's what we've done here, is we've created these kind of four quadrants. One is the kind of the program announcements. Anything that's coming up, kind of the highlights out of the newsletter that we want um, contractors be aware of. So that way when they come in, they see it. It's the, the uh, most recent information. Um, they click on more information and that will actually take them to the details of this particular announcement. Um, <clears throat> so it'll, it will show the top three items in there. Then we have future training and events. So in this case, um, we have AC quality care trainings um, coming up. So they um, will list out these technician trainings um, and the dates. The one thing, just a caveat, I know some people only say, well, I want the, the, the new or the, um, the most recent one coming up first. That has been fixed. Again, this is a, a dummy um, page. So it will be in order of, mo of the uh, most recent training coming up. Um, and then you can click on any of these, which would bring you to, again, more information and the ability to register for that, for that class or that training. Also, other information in there would be, for example, the boot camps that we just mentioned earlier, um, other webinars that um, um, would be coming up, the NorCal Forum, for example. Those things would be listed as well so that, again, it's a, it's a nice central place to see what events and trainings are coming up. Then I mentioned about the upcoming or the field QC inspections. Again, what this populates are the most recent or the next upcoming five inspections. Um, it will tell you the address um, of, the, of the job, and then you could click on um, the view application to take you directly to that application that was submitted uh, by you, the contractor, so you can understand the job and determine if you are interested in going out and going out with the QC uh, technician or whether you'll just let it go through the uh, process. The one caveat here is the field QC inspections are only the Build It Green uh, selected um, applications for field QC. This does not include any of pg and &E's CIP inspections. So those we do not have and those um, we will not be able to um, share. And then the last one is, again, quick, quick reference guides. So as, you, many, as some of you know, we have the Build It Green Utility uh, portal that has a lot of information on it. Um, what we've done is, in the case of like ACQC, is we've combed it down to like the five or six uh, top items that contractors um, for ACQC have asked for many times. And so you can click on those and go directly to get that information either to log in for the login for, let's say, the SA portal, which is the tool used in ACQC, or to go and download the contractor handbook or other um, uh, tools. And then if you needed to go to see all of them, again, clicking all would take you to that full list of everything um, that you can then go in and search and download. Um, so then from here, as we go back up to the top, so. I mentioned that's kind of the dashboard. Now, for contractors in ACQC, they can also go in and uh, look at their applications that are in the system. So you can see we've got about 36 entries in here. Um, the filters, the filter feature is a great way to be able to narrow down a search. So if you needed to find a particular job, you could start typing in and it it's a real-time search feature, so as you type more and more in, it will narrow your search down um, to a, you know, to a, 
a narrower and narrower um, band so you can then find out what uh, job you are looking for. Um, once you find it, again, if you click on the application number, <clears throat> it then will pull up the application that was submitted. It will um, show you the information again that was included in there, what was applied for as the measure for the ACQC, what files were uploaded as uh, along with the um, with the measure. And then down below, as well as up top, will be any kind of um, notes or progression in this process. So as I mentioned early on, if there was a contractor action required, if you went to this, let's say this was the application that needed to be, had some information updated, you would see down below here kind of the the history of that um, application in terms of notes from the reviewer. So you would um, see what was needed to what needed to be corrected on the application in the notes field. Um, you know when that was uh, when that was submitted for correction. At the top, where instead it says rebate application form has been approved, instead you would see a light kind of a, a pinkish box, a light red box up at the top that would say that contractor action is required for this application. And again, it will list out what it is that needs to be corrected on the application. So this, again, gives you the application view, um, and it will tell you kind of the status at the, uh, the top. Contractors also here uh, for ACQC can apply for a new rebate again making it somewhat of a simplified process it looks like the form we just looked at except this one um, is the one that is completed in the case of the ACQC there is a um, assessment um, that is collected uh, with a with mobile devices out in the field that is then uploaded and then the contractor in order to submit would first go in select a um, you know select a job to match to it and then by selecting it, what it does is it automatically pre-populates many of these fields. Um, and then in this case, we do require a tracking of the technician, so the contractor has to select the technician that did the work, and then provide the SAID number um, off of the utility bill, and then select who receives the, uh, the payment. I'm just going to put a number in here. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. You select what uh, in the measures, in this case, what are being um, applied for. Um, and in this case, there does have to be a date selected for these. And then you have to upload uh, the files that are required for the program. Uh, let me just throw something in there for a test. So you would upload the various um, files that are required. It'll tell you, obviously, if they're required by the asterisk next to it. Any notes that the contractor or the technician wants to include, there may be something that obviously or could be a concern, uh, could be seen as a failure, or maybe it's something that uh, you want to highlight for a potential if there is a QC visit, uh, or even for the desktop reviewer. Uh, once that is completed, if everything is correct and you hit submit, uh, it will pr prompt you, do you want to submit? Yep. And then it will process the request. If I had missed something, we'll see if this happens, if I've missed something, it will come back with a kind of, oh, you've missed something, a red bar at the top, you need to go back, and then it will highlight in red, let's say if you forgot the pg e sticker number, um, it would highlight it in red and say this needs to be complete, and then you'd be you'd have the option to go ahead and resubmit that. Um, if you couldn't get through all of it, if you were missing something, if you noticed, I, I forgot to highlight, but at the bottom of the page, the previous page, there was also a save. So the nice thing here is that if you get into the process, if your data processors or back office are in the middle and they realize they're missing something, they don't lose everything. They can save it and then come back at a later time to pick up where they left off so that you know that that was part of the frustration of the old one is that you once you started you had to complete 
under this, you can save it. Um, but in this case, the, the application has gone through. It's been success, successfully submitted. If I go back to here, we should see that the uh, number has gone up by one, um, up to 19. I think it was 18 before. And again, now it starts the process of going through and being tracked in the application status. So that's kind of the, the, the heart of the AC quality care. And this is what we kind of use to build, build off for the home upgrade and eventually will be the uh, basis of the advanced portal. Um, so if you're a contractor and you're in both programs, then you'll see this button over here. Um, in this case, it takes you then, you can switch to the home upgrade portal. Now I will also say is the home upgrade portal, although it's out and live, we are actually still in development. We are still adding, um, eventually we'll be adding some additional features um, to the home upgrade portal. But as you can see, we've switched over. So again, this seamless kind of a switch. Once you're in as a contractor, you don't have to log out. You don't have to log into a different site, different URL, different password. It is just a seamless jump. And so the switch bar has changed now that you can switch back to the ACQC if you need to. Otherwise, you can tell that you're in the home upgrade uh, site by the title in the top bar. The navigation looks the same. And again, we have this kind of uh, dashboard feel. So we have the application status um, across the top of where these uh, app, where your applications sit um, in the status process. We will be adding some additional metrics um, shortly down the road. And then again, as I mentioned, this was a these are dummy or test sites. So down here you see there's the same kind of four quadrants and just picture that the same kind of information that's pertinent to uh, either home upgrade or across programs would be in this area. So if there were training and events, obviously you wouldn't see ACQC training here. Instead, you'd see any training around home upgrade or any events that uh, pertain to home upgrade or uh, that could pertain across the programs. Um, so you know, again, trying to keep it so that the the UI, the first initial UI is similar. You're not having to search different places. And the process is pretty much the, um, the same. You know, within applications, you would see a list of um, applications um, listed. You have the same ability to search by doing the show and hide filters. Um, in this case, because the programs obviously are different, uh, you get a little different information in terms of you know what the point totals um, would be, the estimated um, incentive total, and the status of application. If you were to click into one of them, again, you're going to get the information on the application um, that was submitted into the program, what documents were provided. You have um, additional um, attachments that you can um, upload as you go through the process. And again, you can you know, save your attachments, save the um, application in the process. Um, back to applications. And again, very similar as with the ACQC that we went through. You, know, you uh, go through an application process that we hope is very kind of streamlined, um, um, simplified, doesn't require a lot of, um, uh, you know, if you want to say a lot of um, learning, there's not a steep learning curve on. So, um, you know, once you complete all of the information, you can go ahead and again follow that same submit process where it will tell you if something is missing, is incomplete. If it's complete, you will get the uh, notification at the top that it's been submitted for review. If there's something missing, it will tell you with the red bar that something is missing and highlight what it is that, uh, what the item is incomplete. Um, and then again, once that is submitted, you would once again see that the dashboard would increase um, by that one number um, on the status and you would then be able to follow that through the tracking process. So as we mentioned, these are the two right now that are uh, live out there for contractors uh, and um, 
using this, we are going, we are working on building the advanced. Um, obviously, that one is a little more, uh, <laughs> by the term advanced, a little more complicated than uh, the other two that I've just shown here. But again, we're going to try to keep it to that same kind of uniform look and feel. The dashboard front page uh, will look pretty much the same across the programs um, with this single portal login access um, for contractors. So um, I think that covers uh, what I was going to um, go ahead and review. So um, Chris, I guess I'll turn it back over to, over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm going to bring us back to our um, presentation slides. And uh, so now we're ready to jump into questions and answers. Again, uh, please uh, feel free to use the uh, raised hand feature or the question pane. Uh, I think we have a small enough group that we can have a good uh, in-person uh, experience with uh, our question and answer. So um, I'm going to open it. Oops, sorry. Get back to that uh, and open it up uh, for uh, questions from our attendees. Uh, Karen, do you have attendees uh, wishing to make a comment or a question? And I don't have any raised hands yet. Just remind people to raise your hand and I will unmute you uh, so that you can ask your question directly. Right, so on the screen you should see the slide showing where the button for raised hand is and uh, just click on that and we'll know that you would like to make a comment. Um, I wrote down a couple of questions myself during the presentation so maybe I'll get things rolling with those questions. Uh, so uh, in, when the advanced portal uh, is added to this uh, portal platform that you've debuted and, and walked us through today, uh, how does the HP XML output from the advanced home upgrade software, is that the um, information file that will be uploaded to the portal uh, as the project information? Is that to me or to Joe? Uh, Bruce or Joe or, yeah, whoever. So. whoever uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, was gonna, I was on my own mute. I'm sorry about that. Um, I was going to say I'll start with the answer to that question, and then Bruce can uh, add to it. So my understanding is the hope is that much like I showed with the ACQC program where there was that match your SA Mobile data to the application, um, my understanding is it will be very similar, that you'll be able to match that um, HP XML file to your application so that uh, you know you'll be able to link those uh, together. Um, Bruce, do you have any other um, anything else around that? Yeah, I can well, I guess there's a couple ways that this might work. I mean, I guess the way I expect it to work at least initially is pretty much the way it works with Energy Pro that you know in Energy Pro you go in, you do your model, you you get your results. And you export a file that is an Energy Pro XML file. And when you go and submit your application for uh, an incentive, that's one of the files that you attach. Right? Joe showed you how to attach files as part of the documentation. And so that, that XML file is what you attach. And then you know, our system will go and grab that file and read it and take that information and use it to populate our tracking system. So that's kind of the manual version of doing this. There is some discussion, probably not on day one, but down the road, the, the potential for us to actually have what is in I, in computer terms called an API, which stands for uh, something interface. Um, and in you know, if we have an API, then there would be the opportunity for the software vendors to build a function where you output, you know, you do your model and you hit export, and it just goes straight to the tracking system, and there's not this manual export, download, upload step. It, it, it all goes directly. So that's, I think, a longer term uh, development opportunity. Great. 
Um, Karen, do we have uh, questions from our attendees? I yes, I or, the um, in or yeah, go ahead. Right. Oh, the timing's bad. I've got to sneeze. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, it's not coming. Uh, this is Ori. Guys, great, great presentation. And um, Leif and Bruce, uh, I definitely came into this with some, some big concerns, and you've alleviated those concerns in a big way. So thank you. I'm really glad you guys are, are thinking about this in the way that you are. It's awesome. I'm very excited to have this uh, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> Leif, a comment for you. You mentioned that uh, before, the, uh, before this whole thing goes live, the vendors will provide training. Um, of their software. <clears throat> Quick question and then a follow-up question. How many vendors are there right now that are going to be presenting their software? So we have nine vendors who have signed a, what we call participation agreement with us um, to participate in the development of the test um, that we're using to bring the, the software into the program and to kind of signal their intention that they're interested. Um, I don't think that all of them will be ready to um, export in X, HPXML by the late May, June time frame. Uh, so I'm going to guess, based on the fact that Arizona has three of the same software vendors already working in their program exporting files to them, um, that we'll have somewhere between three and six <clears throat> to start with. and. Um, what I've told the software vendors is that if they're not ready in this first round, we're going to put them at arm's length for a few months while we make sure that we get the first group through the process successfully and, and our back-end data systems are all working at the level that we want them to work at. And then we'll circle back around with a, a second group of vendors sometime in the fall. To bring them into the program because if, if they're not ready to export in HPXML, there's a lot of hand-holding that has to take place as we help them figure out how to properly code stuff. And um, that, again, is something, as Bruce mentioned, that we've been counseled by Arizona Public Service. It takes a lot of time. So they're the ones who are recommended to us. Bring them in in two, two groups, um, those who are most ready first, and then deal with the, the second group later. So to answer your question, I th I'd say three to six vendors by May, June. OK. Uh, that's great. And then my follow-up question is, uh, in the interest of time, and again, just to allow contractors to prepare themselves the best, it'd be great uh, that rather than our first exposure to these vendors be their training, I would love it if there was some anything ahead of time uh, that we could get that would kind of have a summary of the features or a link to their existing uh, software or anything you can give us ahead of time before that full-on training uh, so I can assess on my own, oh, you know what, the features available in this software program aren't as robust as this other one. I'm probably going to, if I'm going to spend my time somewhere, I'm going to be on the training for this vendor versus this one or something to give us a little more information ahead mm -hmm. of time would be awesome. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. I We have a call coming up with the software vendors. I think what I'll do is ask them uh, whether they're inter whether they some some of them have their software on a website you can go and you can kind of play around with a dummy version of it. Um, I will tell them that our contractors are interested in doing that and that all of them who have a similar capability, if they could send us a link to that or if they are willing to allow somebody to come in with a user a guest user password for you know, a, a period of time, if they are willing to do that, that that they let us know how that how that should be set up, so that I can pass that on to you. That'd be great. And if there's a vendor that doesn't want to, doesn't have that capacity, and is building something up, even if they were willing to put together a PDF of some screenshots of mm -hmm. their software with notes mm -hmm. of what it does, that mm -hmm. too would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Okay. Yep, we'll do cool. that. Uh, this has been something that's been on my mind, too, because you're right. I mean, if there's six of them and they each need half a day for training, you probably don't have time to go to all of that. You'd like some way to pre-screen them. I, I get it. Yeah, exactly. And a whole nother level, maybe, I don't know if 
if uh, this is appropriate or not, but in addition what would be awesome would be rather than if, it, if you're talking about a half day training, I would love kind of a preview of all these all at the same time. So a webinar, uh, two hour webinar, whatever it is, where each one of these vendors gets on and they can share their screen for 15 minutes and then do a preview so that then I really do know which ones I want to go and do the training on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Another option. Okay. Well, cool. And then Bruce, that's great. Thanks, Leif. Uh, and then Bruce, uh, so you definitely uh, definitely answered those questions. That's awesome. And I just want to hear it from your mouth one more time again to make sure that I understand it. My understanding of what you said is that uh, Energy Pro and the existing portal are going to be up and running, you know, forevermore as long as needed without any changes, any glitches, um, and that when the new software comes, or, or this new portal, I should say, comes online, um, we'll log in, we can log into the new portal, uh, and it will be up at the same time as the old one. So we'll just basically make that switch. We could literally submit to one job to the old portal, one job to the new portal, you know, any which way we choose to do it. Is, is that correct? Um, let me let me let me offer a few uh, friendly amendments. Um, I, well, starting with kind of the last comment first. So, in terms of logging on, um, I'm not certain that you would be able to log into that you know landing page that Joe showed you, and then from there go to ACQC or Home Upgrade or the new Advanced or the old Advanced, and, and that may still be a separate login process with a separate you know, username and password. So. Uh, I'm not sure that we can offer that level of integration of the old into the new. I, I don't um, think you should. I, I don't, I don't okay. think that's an issue at all. Okay, yeah. so I'm not sure that was what you were asking for, but let me be clear that that's not what we're promising. Uh, and then the second friendly amendment, you use the word forevermore, and let me amend that to say for the foreseeable future. Um, and, and let me maybe elaborate on that a little bit. So once we've got all this up and running, then we've got, I think, another kind of decision milestone about kind of what to do about Energy Pro. And there's a few scenarios that could unfold. So one scenario is that uh, EnergySoft goes back and builds in the HPXML capabilities into Energy Pro, and now their results are completely compatible with everybody else's, and you can submit an Energy Pro job into the new portal, in which case there's really no point in maintaining this existing portal, and we prefer to take it down. Uh, so that's one scenario. Another scenario is that everybody stampedes over to the new software, and no one's using Energy Pro anymore, in which case we can also take it down. Um, the third scenario, and the one which I think is probably the most likely, is that uh, and, and, and one which I, I hope is the outcome is that contractors love the new portal. And even the contractors that would like to stay with Energy Pro would prefer to use the new portal. And so then I think we all need to contemplate the, the possibility of uh, building in additional capabilities into the new portal so that it can read an Energy Pro file as well as an HPXML file so that you can submit everything in one portal. Um, those are decisions that have not been made yet. I don't think we even want to address those until we've got, you know, we can show success with what we've already kind of bitten off here. Um, but those are scenarios in which I could see eventually arriving to the point where we say, okay, the new, the old portal has outlived its usefulness, and we can we can mothball it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And and one other piece in there. Let's say I want to uh, try the new software portal, so I submit a job to there, and then I'm not happy. Can I just as easily submit, go back to the old portal and continue submitting jobs? Can I kind of go back sure. and forth, or want? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you can. This is a dynamic decision. You can, you know, you can change your mind three times a week, three times a day. Um, you know, because they're both live. They're both, uh, you know, submitting in real time. You can use three different software tools, and one of them could be Energy Pro. You know, so, you know. Those are all internal decisions that you get to make. OK. And then uh, now, Leif, I you? The one, let me, the one caveat to that, let me say, is that you know, the new portal only shows you the jobs that you submitted on the new portal. So that dashboard there with all the jobs and the dollars and all that, it, it's not going to show you anything that you submit with Energy Pro. So I just want to be clear about that. Sure. Um, and then uh, you mentioned uh, you're going to do some testing with power users, a select number of power users. 
Right. Um, and that's to, to test the interface? Is that right? Right. So initially we'll have a user interface. You know, basically you're taking what you saw here in the demo, uh, adapting it for the advanced program design, um, and then and being able to test a, you know, a working version of that with, with a group of users. Now at this point, we wouldn't necessarily have fully tested and vetted all of the different software tools that are coming in, and we, you know, but we do have right now one, you know, uh, a sample output file from one software vendor. It actually it doesn't have all the data elements that were required, but we've got some ways to test this now and give people a chance to uh, kind of experience the the user interface hands on. Okay, so go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Lori. Um, so basically, as, if I understand it correctly, it's almost like a pre-beta beta testing with a very, very small group it's, before doing well, it. It's, and it's during the design process. When, you know, rather than wait till we've got this thing done and we think that it's ready for prime time and then saying, okay, this is the first chance for any contractors to even try it, you know, this is back, you know, what we're still in, we're still in design and development mode. Um, gotcha. But it's giving people a chance to use it, you know, to try out a working prototype. Okay, so that's that's awesome. So these power users are contractors, yeah, that yeah. are going to be are being testing out. And is your it, it, I don't know if you've already talked to contractors. Is your expectation that contractors will volunteer, or is there funding to pay contractors to pay their staff to hammer on this? What's that going to look like? We haven't talked about any funding or payment situations. I mean, we believe that. We've got a number of candidates that uh, would, you know, qualify as a power user, and you know, I would expect our first, you know, our, our first approach would be to, you know, go down a short list of people that we think could give us some good quality feedback, and you know, invite them to, to volunteer to test it out. Uh huh. And so, if I can just, so, oh, I'm sorry, I, I just sorry, thought Chris, that one, might be one last, sure. one last comment just on that, and then I'll shut up. Sorry. I would just propose and suggest that you guys consider if you have any, my experience with contractors world, very, very busy, and if you want real quality feedback, uh, probably the, the folks that are going to give that most, the most quality feedback are the staff among the contractors that are doing this day in and out, right? the person who's the, the rebate manager, uh, probably on one, some of these power users. Um, and so that's just a cost to the contractor, right? We're all very, very busy, and they're usually slammed, so I don't know all the funding, I know PG&E gave you guys some funding and, and if you guys have the budget, but if you guys, I think, were willing to pay for a few hours of staff, contractor staff time, we're not, it's not going to be a lot of money, but I think that would be a nice gesture and more equitable. Great. I, I think it's a helpful suggestion. We'll definitely put that under consideration. Cool. Thanks. I'm done. Thanks, Chris. Sure. Uh, and I just want to slip in my little comment, which is um, having a sense for what this interface uh, testing process looks like is this pre-supplied data and it's a matter of taking an hour to work with it in, within the, the the portal framework or you know being able having a sense of the time commitment and the uh, testing depth and the type of feedback uh, that is that you're looking for would also uh, help in identifying folks who who can commit uh, to providing that feedback. Uh, Karen, did we have other comments or questions from our attendees? Yeah. Yes, Casey has a question. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Casey. Uh, hi, I wasn't sure. Um, I was just wondering, because the um, AC Quality Care and the Home Upgrade are um, the same login, um, we have two different people handling those two different programs. Can they both be logged in at the same time looking at their dashboard? Uh, yes, this is Joe. Um, yes, there's not a, I mean, they can view it. It's not a, doesn't lock you out. Okay. Okay, that, that was actually my only question. Or actually, I was also wondering, um, on the home upgrade dashboard, there's that pie chart of how um, the status of all the customers. Where it says rebates issued, is that only for newly issued, or does does that, because I'm concerned that that rebates issued spot will just get bigger and bigger and kind of block out the rest of the statuses. Um, so I, I kind of was wondering, can we customize it to not show rebates issued or anything like that? Um, 
Yes, because that was something with the ACQC as well that we uh, noticed. And I believe we've set it, and I think it just needs to have a, a asterisk next to it that it's going to be tied to that six-month view. So okay. um, I think it does, you know, so it doesn't, because you're right. We noticed that with ACQC, all of a sudden it became the whole, the, uh, whole donut graph. So we do have something in there that uh, limits um, that particular one on the graph. Okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure the, the status I was seeing was, I want to, I, I'm more concerned about the status of ongoing customers, so that's good. Yep. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you, Casey. Uh -huh, thank uh, you. Anyone else? Chris, I'm seeing some questions that were submitted in writing on our uh, GoToMeeting dashboard. Yes, uh, yes, go ahead and, and uh, address those. That would be great. We have okay. about I'll, I'll just I about can. 13 minutes left. Okay. So this is uh, submitted from, uh, looks like, Josue. Uh, concern that if and when you launch the new format that you provide live face-to-face -face group training sessions. And uh, I think we can safely say, yes, we will definitely provide live face-to-face well, it would almost certainly be a webinar, you know, similar to what you've uh, seen here. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely give uh, the full, all, all participating countries will have a chance to attend both a live training on, on the, the portal as well as, you know, uh, view the recorded version if, uh, if you're not able to make the schedule live. And uh, I anticipate we would do that multiple times. Um, I see that question has been answered copy the webinar. I, I assume that this is being recorded. Does that mean, Chris, that people will be able to see and hear, listen to the webinar later? Is that right? Yes. Yes. It'll be posted uh, with all our other webinars in the series on Great. the Build a Green website. Great. Great. Um, this one um, is important that whatever new software you incorporate, that it have elegant and graphic client reporting features in order to make the complex simple and assist us in explaining data to the client. So I believe this comment is referring to the software tools that are going to be, you know, allowed into the program. And uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get whatever reporting features that they, they include, but um, I guess I, I just want to clarify that, that that part's outside of Building Green's control. What, what, what we're able to do is set the system to receive their outputs, and then it'll be up to the contractor to shop around and choose a tool that gives the best reporting features and the best functionality um, that, that you like. Um, there's a question. Uh, many of us already have $1,500 invested in Energy Pro. I think the question is whether or not you have to pay for the new tools. Uh, that's true, and I anticipate that these new software vendors will have their own user fees uh, associated with that. Um, and so it'll be up to each contractor to decide, you know, if you want to switch, um, and you know, how much is it worth it to you to switch? And you know, that's a business decision. Uh, but we want to at least give you those choices, and as part of that, give you the choice of keeping what you've got now. So uh, that stays on the table. Um, training is king. I agree with that. What are the names of the software vendors? Is it Leif? Are we able to? you know, list individual software vendors at this point, or is that premature? Um, I, I don't mind listing them as participating contractors, just that uh, people need, I, I'm sorry, participating um, uh, software vendors. Just keep in mind that this is a list people have raised their hand, said that they are interested in participating with us, may not be the final list of those that are available to you in the program. So give me just a second to bring that list up. <laughs> While he's doing that, there's another question here, follow-up question. What's the cost of these new software options? Um, I don't know their pricing structure. I don't know if Leif knows their pricing structure, uh, but that may be information that the vendors themselves will need to provide. Should I uh, go to the next question while you're bringing that yeah. up, Leif? Yeah, so Another question, will our finished projects be part of the new portal? So. Uh, this this kind of gets into I, I think the conversations about you know what happens with the existing portal and, and does it stay live? Um, so I mean I guess another uh, design decision we'll need to make is you know once this new portal is is live, do we migrate data from the old portal to the new portal so that you can see your history going back before you made the switch? Um, I'm pretty confident that data migration will not happen on day one. 
Um, and we're, we're just going to have to decide uh, if and when we do that and how fast. So um, I guess the short answer is I don't know. Uh, and it may be that you know you look in one portal to see your HPXML jobs, you look in another portal to see your Energy Pro jobs, and those you know, remain uh, in two different portals uh, until we you know, finalize this decision making around how, how these might eventually merge. So um, I guess the short answer there is I don't know yet. Um, cost of the new software, I think we, that's, we answered that. So uh, I'm going to turn back over to Leif here. OK. So uh, the list of nine are uh, Optimizer, CSG, which stands for Conservation Services Group, uh, PSD, Performance Systems Development, uh, also known as TREAT, Hancock Software, Earth Advantage, Apogee, Planet Ecosystems, Snug Homes, and Auditor. So the three that we know are up and running in Arizona right now are Optimizer, Snug, and Auditor. Um, the the others, uh, just not sure of uh, their ability to export an HBXML at this time, but um, we will be uncovering that over the next weeks, weeks and months. Um, we are very close to running the software through uh, a test set of homes that are representative of all homes that have been through the program. So far, test set will be about 12 to 20 homes. And if they can produce a fairly accurate prediction of savings for those homes, we'll let them into the program and as, uh, if they can also export to HPXML in a way that we can read it um, uh, pretty easily. So, so they'll pass the test. They'll send us the export files. We'll try to read them. If we can read them OK and, they, and they're accurate in terms of their predictions, <clears throat> then they'll be candidates for <clears throat> use in the program. If either of those two fail, um, we're going to ask them to come back around for a second try in, in the fall. Great. So we have just... Ori, I believe you have another question. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Yeah, Leif, to, to follow up on what you're saying, um, so when you put them through the best test, um, and find out that they're close enough, uh, coming out the gate, are they going to already have a correction factor? Um, and if yes, are we going to know what that correction factor is? So what Ori is referring to is, in the case of Energy Pro, the Public Utility Commission issued a disposition um, indicating that Energy Pro is overestimating savings, and so we have to apply a correction factor to their predicted savings um, to align them more with what actual savings are. That, uh, that, that correction factor affects us at the utilities because it uh, lowers the amount of savings that we can claim from the program, but it, they've also asked us to apply it to the incentive. And, uh, we feel that the incentives that are in the program currently are where we'd like them to be. If anything, we'd, we'd like to increase them if we can if we can do that and still meet our cost effectiveness goals. But uh, we have a proposal to revise the incentive structure such that we can do that um, as it applies to Energy Pro. As it would apply to the new software, it's we're hopeful that the new software bringing in the program will predict much, much closer to accuracy. And if it does, then there's no need to apply a, a calibration or correction factor. Um, if it doesn't, then we would want to apply one. So it is possible that, let's say, four of the software vendors submit their models into CalTest. Um, three of them predict within, say, 20% of accurate. That may be close enough for now. We won't apply any. Uh, correction factor. If one of them was um, uh, predicting more like 30% off, but we felt it was a strong candidate to bring into the program, we might apply to its prediction a correction factor so that 
when it gave you the final prediction to give to the homeowner, it saves 20%, it was actually 20% and not, if their model said originally, you know, 25, 20, 26%, um, we would apply, we would make sure that they apply that correction factor to what they give you to give to the customer. So some of this will be hopefully invisible to you, um, but for us on the program side, if we apply that correction factor to a model, we have to keep track of it. And um, for, you know, going forward, when we use that model, that version of that particular software model, we need to keep, keep track of whether we have a correction factor applied to that, that version. But um, most of that will be hopefully invisible to you. Um, as I said, our goal is to try to keep the incentive amounts roughly equal to what they are now or even greater. And um, we have a proposal in place to do that. The software models would, would give you a prediction that is, that is accurate that you can give to your customer. Uh, thank you, Leif. Uh, we're just about can I at do a time question here. There? Pardon? Did you have another question? I was going to ask if I can do a follow-up question, but I know we're getting we're getting down on time. Uh, yeah, if it's um, a quick one, I think we can you know we can go with okay, it. Okay, really so quick, two 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 part question. Uh, so, Leif, will you guys tell us what the uh, threshold is, what the acceptance threshold is, whether it's ten percent, twenty percent, so that we know how how to speak about that to our customers? And then part two is is part of the thinking at this point already to get that feedback back to the contractors as efficiently first as talked about so that we can so that the software is improving or that we can talk about it understand how we're doing in terms of um, how accurate the predictions are mm -hmm. okay yeah that's um, that's a good suggestion I, I think that we would like to convey to you for the different software models that pass a program how close they came to predicting accurately on our test homes. Um, I'd be happy to, at this point, I think we could divulge, you know, whether they were plus or minus 5% or plus or minus 20%. Um, keep in mind that our test isn't perfect either. Um, you know, we've done our best to find homes that are pretty typical, that are kind of straight down the middle in terms of their complexity. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a test that we're applying to them, but it's not, it's not the most rigorous test. The most rigorous test is how does it do over time in the field, which gets to your second question, which is uh, Caltrack, the process by which we're going to compare actual uh, billing data to the predictions that were made on each, on each type of software. We still do intend to put Caltrack in place. We do intend to provide feedback to contractors and to software vendors as to how well their software is doing in the field against actual usage data on those homes. We, I think you can understand that we need a period of time after the retrofit has been completed to get an accurate sense of how that software is performing or how that initial prediction was performing compared to bills something like nine months, 12 months, because we ideally get a heating season and a cooling season and a shoulder season to, um, to true up the software. So um, we hope to have Caltrack in place about nine to 12 months after the first homes um, go through the program using new software. So nine to 12 months after June of this year. That's our goal. We hope to be able to provide each contractor with feedback on how well their predictions are doing in the field at that time. Great. Thank you very much, Leif, Bruce, and Joe, for an excellent discussion and the, this great new information about what's coming down the pipeline. Um, it is time for us to wrap up, so I just want to uh, remind folks that next week we have the two-day boot camp in Fresno. This is a free event to participating contractors and uh, features Mike Rogers who has a great whole business approach to, to building and scaling uh, home performance business models. So please check it out on the Build It Green website to register. Also, ACI National Conference coming up at the end of the month. I believe the um, 
The discounted early bird registration is still open, that they've extended that. So uh, check it out on the ACI website. And here, please ignore the question and answer stuff, but down at the bottom there's a, a little information on April 16th, the next webinar in the Build It Green uh, series is coming up. It's part two of a practical guide to home upgrade financing. Uh, we will be looking at the CHF loan program, the HERO program, and learning a bit more about a pilot program for on-bill repayment that is currently underway uh, with the CPUC. So if you have any further comments or questions about today's webinar and the, the uh, upcoming uh, updates to the Advanced Home Upgrade Portal, uh, please contact Joe. Here's his contact information. And uh, we appreciate your time, to, your taking the time today to learn about this and provide us with your questions and comments and uh, participate in making this upcoming uh, portal improvement uh, successful for everyone so that it can resolve and help uh, streamline the, the program process for all parties. So have a great day, and we will see you at the next webinar. Thanks a lot, Chris. That was really great. Appreciate it very much. You're welcome.